Let's get a couple news headlines from Ed, and then we'll turn it right over to you. Ed, what do we got today? Because I have a bunch of things to get to. First up right here, Dr. John, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer and New Orleans music legend, has died at the age of 77, according to a statement from his family. He died of a heart attack early yesterday morning. They thank all those who shared his unique musical journey and say that memorial plans are in place. Arrangements will be planned soon. Uh, Also known as the Night Tripper, he blended funk, rock, and soul with a hefty dose of voodoo mysticism. If you've never heard his biggest track, Right Place, Wrong Time, you obviously live under a rock somewhere. Dr. John also worked alongside a bevy of different artists. He was uh, featured in the band's The Last Waltz concert and film, and he played on the Rolling Stones' Exile on Main Street album, Eddie. Yeah, and being a guy that's worked in classic rock radio for so long as well, the right place, wrong time is something that was a staple of most of the playlists at the time uh, that I was doing that sort of radio. So I am aware of it, and I am aware of the influence. And if you follow a, a variety of artists on social media, as I do on Twitter, you will see many have expressed their uh, condolences and the influence of Dr. John that uh, he had on their career. So sad news coming down last night. I did read about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, rest in peace to Dr. John. Yes, have released a 40-minute documentary called Yes, 50. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, it can be viewed via YouTube. Where else? The doc is a teaser for the forthcoming Rhino release, Yes, 50 Live, due on August 2nd. The band is set to embark on their summer season tour titled The Royal Affair Tour. That's going to be them alongside Asia, John Lodge of the Moody Blues, and Carl Palmer's ELP Legacy. First date is next Wednesday in Bethlehem, PA. And that's the John, the non John Anderson Rick yes. Wakeman. Well, that, yes, right. That, that, that other version doesn't exist right now. They they effectively broke up. The one with John Anderson and um, Trevor, Trevor Rabin, Rabin and uh, they did. Yeah, I think they disbanded. Yeah, they did. They disbanded. And well, Alan, well I know and Alan, there was and, well, Wakeman. I yeah, I know there was some talk about them merging together again with the other. Yes. Well, John Anderson wants back in. They want one. I'm, I think it is. They want one final big last hurrah before the end of the day. Well, well, they should do it, and it would make sense to do it. And uh, you know, I think it would be great if they did it. But I, I, I don't know. You know, Trevor Rabin has a huge career in in scoring films and doing uh, music for soundtracks. He's been doing that for decades. He's got a huge career in Hollywood doing that. So Trevor Rabin, if he's the odd man out in that, because of obviously uh, Steve Howe would be there, I mean, I think Trevor Rabin would be fine with that. I think, and we had those guys, that version of Yes as well, on this show. And I get the impression, I mean, Trevor enjoys playing Yes when he when when it's convenient, but I think he is more than fine if it's not happening it seems because he's got such a big career in a, you know doing studio work in Hollywood so we'll see how that plays out anything else Ed? I'm sorry Rick Wakeman a man good for a dirty joke <laughs> if you know him yeah. and there's a hell of a cape that he does <laughs> Ice capades. Stone Temple Pilots will be giving their album Purple, the now standard 25th anniversary deluxe reissue treatment. It'll be out in several editions with Boku bonus material on September 13th. The band, now with new frontman Jeff Goot, has tour dates lined up uh, that month, September and October, alongside Rival Sons. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's a great double bill. And, you know, it's it's funny, this ties into one of the rants Sebastian Bach went on yesterday on this show, and I couldn't be more in agreement with him on this one, and that is the fact that uh, Atlantic Records, the same label that put out that STP album, uh, Atlantic Records, which the catalog is, is run and managed by Rhino, who do tremendous reissues, okay? I, I It is mind-boggling, and Sebastian was joking about it throughout the interview yesterday, it is mind-boggling that they did a 30th anniversary reissue of the first Skid Row record, and they did not do it in any physical formats. Even compounded crazy is, as Sebastian pointed out, they did Skid Row released a, an EP of five songs of covers, and they did that physically, but they didn't do a physical format of a record that, according to Sebastian, is like the, one of the biggest selling debuts in Atlantic Records history, and and it's crazy. There's I don't know. I would love to know what the logic is behind that. And here we are today with the story that Stone Temple Pilots and their Purple album, which is a great record, 
and obviously also sold a ton of copies, and is the same record label is getting multiple formats for the reissue. I don't know how that happened. I, I would love to know the logic be, behind the reason for not doing a proper all the bells and whistles reissue of the first Skid Row record. It's it's crazy. Baz was joking about it yesterday, being, yes, you can enjoy watching a blue line as you download. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I couldn't agree with him more on that. And I really, as I said yesterday as well in the interview, I'm hoping that him announcing doing this tour, playing the record, maybe will give them uh, the idea to go and do a physical run on it. But when you hear STP getting uh, the, the all the formats issued, how the hell did they not do that w- with a record that was, at the time, as big if not bigger? It's very, very strange. I mean, at Anything the, else said? I Remember You is the song every teenage couple had sex to back during that. What eighty nine? It's also it's also a thirty year old record. Yeah. Which which the demo for it, uh, the main meaning the demographic for it is in the forties and fifties, and those are people that are also way more likely to buy physical product. So it it makes no sense at all. I I hope that they rethink it and do a do a physical version and at some point. It's not due to a lack of bonus material because this 30th anniversary digital version which you can stream, they do have yeah, there's a, a it's a concert on it. There's a concert alive from the Marquee Westminster, California uh, from 89. And if they wanted to, and if they really wanted to beef that record up, there are three or four or five songs that were recorded and also, or you know, f- finished recorded or demo versions of songs that did not make that record that they could put on there as bonus tracks. They could do a nice addition. When I was talking to Sebastian yesterday about what, because again, that record, that music was all written and that material was all done before he joined the band. And when I asked Sebastian what was on that initial cassette of the four or five songs they gave him to listen to, there were only two that were actually on the record, that made it on the record. The other two or three songs never made the record. There's a song called Forever. There's a song called Walk with a Stranger that Trickster covered like six years ago. There are there are like three or four songs that Skid Row played all the time in the clubs before that record came out, before Sebastian even joined the band, that... You know, are certainly of the time in terms of their quality and what they sound like, but they're still good songs for that moment, for for the time they were written in. So they could do a really nice addition if they wanted to put something into it, but I don't know where the disconnect is on that. It just makes no sense. We'll see. Maybe they'll change. Uh, but the purple, as far as STP, I'm looking forward to that. And when STP did the deluxe reissue of Core, uh, if you guys remember, if you're a longtime listener, I went to L.A., and we did a town hall with the Stone Temple Pilots guys talking about core and the deluxe reissue of it. So who knows? Fingers crossed. Maybe we'll do something similar again for purple. That would be really cool. What else you got, Ed? Our friends and fellow Rush fans over at Fantunes have another new book out later this year. Swerve. It's not Rush related, but equally as cool. They're going to publish Where is Lemmy? On November 5th, the cartoon book basically gives the late Lemmy Kilmister the Where's Waldo treatment. It's hilarious, albeit in a distinct Lemmy way. Speaking of Rush, did you get a chance to look through your Getty book at all? Yes, it's a good workout every time I pick it up to read it. <laughs> you got to put that thing down on a table. It's not even something you can hold and look through. That's a, it's, it's a it's commitment all, to I, look through that book. I've already broken three coffee tables with it. It's it's it's. Right? Uh, it's a significant book, for sure. It's like Thor's hammer. You have to be worthy in order to lift it off the ground. Uh, yeah. Uh, so else? I wanted to follow up on some of the questions the Trunk Nation faithful have been having uh, concerning these uh, this impending iTunes, quote, shutdown. So a couple of quick points, a couple of answers I want to relay here. Uh, based off of the calls we've been getting. Yes, your existing iTunes gift cards will still work, so hang on to those. The okay. iTunes store is not going away anytime soon. For Apple computer users, the migration from iTunes to this new Apple Music app will be part of the next Mac OS version. So if you want to hold on to iTunes for a little bit longer, it's simple. Just don't update your operating system when they prompt you to. You'll be able to hold on to iTunes. And the real kicker in all of this for PC users, as it stands right now, absolutely nothing is changing for you. 
If you, okay, use, well, that's if good. you use iTunes on your PC, Apple isn't doing anything about it right now. You're still going to have iTunes on your PC to organize music. They haven't uh, implemented any changes to that app, at least at this present moment. Okay, well, that's good to know because that's my biggest concern because I have a PC and I have iTunes on the PC and the 98% of the music that is on my computer and in my phone has been ripped in from my CDs and is synced into my phone. So I want to make sure I can continue doing that and that is good to know that that will remain unaffected. That's the way I want it. Or I don't care if they change the name of it or something, but as long as the simple, the same premise is there and that you can still do that and I can still take my CDs and rip them and sync them, that's what I want to do. Which is funny because when the program was introduced at the tail end of the 90s, that's what its original intent was, as a way to rip it and organize music on your computer. Then it just became bloatware after that. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm good with the, the way it is. I mean, I, I think so many of these apps that we have do these re- renovations and updates that are completely, just when you get really comfortable with using them, here comes a curveball and another way they want you to do it, and you got to relearn it. It's a big pain in the ass when they do that. When something's working, everybody's happy with it, leave it alone. But I understand that, you know, everything <laughs> changes, but... I'm just getting I'm just I'm just learning how to turn my computer on. <laughs> That's why I still run DOS. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> One final thing I have today, Eddie, a programming note uh, tonight on a brand new My First Time with Mr. Larry Flick. He'll be joined by both dancehall pop reggae artist Shaggy as well as Chris Shiflett of the Foo Fighters. Now Chris has a new solo record coming out uh, while not in the Foos when he's not Playing alongside Dave Grohl and company, he actually loves to dabble in country music. Find out more later tonight at 7 p.m. East, 4 p.m. West, right here on Volume. I believe he is also uh, one of those guys heavily into podcasting. Uh, he does a he's a podcast. I mean, who doesn't have a podcast now? <laughs> Speaking of, I'm laughing. Speaking of Sebastian Bach, he also I, I wanted to mention this to him yesterday, which was funny as well. If you follow him on Twitter, he sent out a tweet. And he just wrote, the tweet was simply, no, I don't want to do your podcast. That's all he wrote on Twitter. I just found that so, I forgot to mention it too. Because literally everybody has a podcast. Everybody. Wait. And, and and you know, people have podcasts where 15 people listen to them. And, uh, you know, I'm in media now. Hey, uh, let me call up somebody and get an interview. It's like. It's crazy. It's so crazy. But I just, it was just, that's all he tweeted so one day a few days ago. It wasn't no, a, I don't want to tweet your podcast. It wasn't a response to anybody. He just no. posted that. That's no. effing funny. It's funny as hell. And I understand exactly where he's coming from because there's a, even somebody like me who, you know, is not nearly at the, the, the level of, uh, you know, celebrity, if you will, of somebody like Sebastian. I get barraged with people asking me to do podcast interviews, and every once in a while I will when I have time, but literally everybody has a podcast, and you find yourself, you just be, spend a day doing interviews, and cumulatively you do 15 podcasts, and maybe 300 people heard the whole thing because most of them don't have any audience, but he just wrote that. No, I don't want to do your podcast. It was it was just perfect. It really was. Uh, speaking of podcasts, my interview with George Lynch came out as mine yesterday, and the podcast that I do, you know, it's it, for people who have Sirius XM and listen. There's not much there because it's it's a repurpose of one of the interviews that I do after they run their course here on on uh, on the app and what have you, but. Uh, and then I usually I put some new things around it. But really what it does is it serves as a, a commercial and a push and a taste and a tease to people who don't get the service or people who are outside of America and Canada to hear what's going on and, and push them to hopefully uh, come on board with us on Sirius XM. But uh, there are people that are intensely into podcasting, and I believe – I, and some of them are great, by the way, but I believe that Chris Shiflett from the Foo Fighters is one of them. And I I can tell you this, too. I don't know Chris, but I did have him on this show. He was in the studio. And that was a funny, weird thing. I'll never forget that. My my one Chris Shiflett uh, experience was that, I think it was before you, Ed. I think it was in the first year with Alex. But I'm in the middle of doing my thing in the studio in New York, and we have these glass studios, and you can see through. People can look in and out while you're doing a show, and there's a guy standing out there trying to walk into the studio, and I'm shooing him away 
because he was trying to come in and sit down and nobody knew who he was. And it was Chris Shiflet. Somebody, nobody told us that Chris was, Chris was booked to come in and do my show that day, but nobody told me or I believe at the time Alex. And we didn't know who he was because he also, he, 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 he changes his look a little bit here and there. But we, we, no one recognized him. No one knew who he was. So I'm shooing the guy out of the studio. Oh, jeez. And, and then all of a sudden he's like walking down the hall. And then somebody came in and said, that was Chris from the Foo Fighters. He's booked on your show. I was like, nobody told us. So we went running down the hall and grabbed him. And then if we, we had him in. And he sat in and we talked for about a half an hour on the air. And at that point, he had just made a record. So we talked. But I was completely unprepared. <laughs> it's like, hey, come on in, man. Nice to meet you. We had a nice talk. But uh, it was one of those one of those weird, awkward moments that I'll, I'll never forget because nobody... So there was some disconnect in the communication, and we didn't know. He's walking away mumbling, you know, this doesn't happen to Dave Grohl. Yeah, exactly.